run a group called Lee Thomas Partnership. We started in January, uh, um, well, December. From there, what we've done is we've progressed, but like we say, it's not all about feeding for us. Um, we know that it's people falling through the, crap, uh, through, through the cracks. We need aftercare, we need the uh, relapses when they're coming out of obviously the drug, rehabilitation, the drug rehabilitations. Um, and what we're basically about is that we go out there and we do do outreaches and we do them three, four times a week, but we own the street kitchen and this street kitchen is starting to get to where people are starting to not take the mick with us, but we're starting to get people who are coming down and they're starting to see how good what we're doing is good nature and they're starting to take the mick out of it. So what we've introduced is we've introduced ID cards. So these ID cards are mainly for the genuine homeless. So what we're doing is we're going out on the night time, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and making sure we find the people who are dubbing down. These people who are dubbing down, obviously, they're going to come to our group, they're going to get the priority over the people who are, you know, the less needy, the people who've got a house. Yeah, we're happy to feed them, we're happy to give them clothing, but obviously we need to get to the people who are actually on the streets. So we brought these ID cards out, and in the process of bringing them out, I had a meeting with St George's Crypt last week, when I introduced them into St George's Pit, they were already out on there. Yeah. I reproduced them, they were in production and they were going to be printed back there. As soon as I introduced them to the St George's Crypt, I found out yesterday that St George's Crypt are now taking my idea away and they've actually started putting these into production themselves. So, we're starting to go down the route where we're going to try and obviously work with them, but obviously we don't want to profit them. And what we're thinking about we're going to do is take it away as a business idea for them and sell it to other organisations all around England if it works. It started to work with our group on it, Absolutely. you know, and what it is, we didn't, we, we got homeless coming down to us at, at the very beginning, but then it started drifting away, because obviously the homeless were coming down and seeing people who wasn't homeless, taking their stuff, so they didn't want to engage with these people. They was honest with me, they said to me, listen, I'm going to start fighting, and if we start fighting at your cause, obviously, you're not going to like us, you're going to stop it straight away, so these people stopped coming down. So we've got to group cause now, and we're like, right, hold on, these homeless people are now drifting away, and we set up for homeless people. So we've gone back to the root cause of, right, listen, if we put these cards into place, the homeless are going to start coming through slowly, but they're starting to come back and getting the trust off us. You know, I've got a lot of trust on the street with these guys. Um, this is what the crypt and obviously the police are not understanding. The crypt is the only organisation that's out there, but when you get a yellow card and a red card, and you need to use amenities and you need to get food or you need to get clothing or you need somewhere to stay, you have to go back into the city centre so obviously you're on your dispersal, then you're going to get arrested, taken to court, and a hundred pound fine. So it's all a catch twenty-two for these guys. Give them a forty-eight hour asbor, don't they? Yes. So yeah. the same thing with the yellow card is, is that you get given a yellow card and it never wipes off. So it doesn't matter if you come into a centre in three months' time, you're still on that yellow card. So what it is is you get a yellow card and it's on your it's on your record for life, really, isn't it? And it's on your record. <laughs> so from there you get a red card, and you get three taken strikes. to court, and fine, and a hundred pound. These guys don't have. So, I'm just saying, uh, the other card, uh, Carl, straight away, Carl. Yes. What, what, uh, can I interrupt? Yes, yeah, yeah. We had a situation, I don't think we're two weeks back. Yes, um, yes. We're setting up on the Monday. We go down and out at Hayden. Hayden comes on a Sunday, he's ever present, we're ever present, or we try to be. Um, we seen four police officers around one of these guys, went up, we instantly knew it, right, we're Carl, so we've gone up, and this guy's genuinely homeless, he's in the doorways, he takes a ten, a ten every three days. Yes. Um, and these coppers around him, you know, uh, hawking him, basically. Aidan's gone straight over, I've gone straight over, the coppers are going, you've been yellow carded, Carl. So Carl's turned around and he said to him at that minute, he went, I ain't got one. He said, Carl, have you got a yellow card? He went, no, I ain't got one. And copper turned around and said, that's because you won't accept it. I turned around at that Shut given time down. straight Shut away and I said, that means he has not been served. Exactly. Yeah, and if he hasn't been served, that means at the end of the day you've got no jurisdiction. He turned around the cop and went, it don't work like that. And I went, <laughs> yes it does. I went, now he's in. I, I said, now Carl is in our jurisdiction and in our duty of care. The, the cop had turned around and they went. Now, in normal scenarios, they would have arrested him if he hadn't have had, had that little bit of experience, that little bit of knowledge around him, but he held his own because he didn't accept the card, and that's the big thing. He ain't accepting that contract, and that's what it's about. But anyway, jump it back over to Hayden. So with these ID cards, um, the police have actually started to relax on the, yeah. with, with, with the homeless. The homeless are telling us now, but the police are starting to walk past them on the streets, even though they're sitting down. They're just walking past them. If they see these cards, they're walking past them because obviously we've had meetings upon meetings with the police. Um, 
And then we had a problem with Leeds Bid. I don't know whether you, you've heard of it. Basically, these guys are the new guys with a hat who were in Leeds City Centre. They're probably in every single city across England. But in their job description, it actually says that they're here to clean out and to, what is it, contact relevant agencies and organisations and to contact the police of rough sleepers or professional beggars in Leeds. Which obviously we don't condone professional begging do it at all. No. But it, it goes on. I mean, there's, yeah. there's, there's fair views of it. And we, we pretty much know who the professional beggars yeah. are because what they do is uh, when we approach them with a, with, with a carry bag full of food and toiletries, uh, I don't need it, don't, I live yeah. like a king. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And there is, there, they are out there, yeah. don't get me wrong. But the police and, and, and uh, Leeds Bid and Leeds City Council use that as an excuse. Yeah, basically to shut these other homeless people down. What they're doing is they're labelling all of them yeah. as, as beggars. Yeah. yeah, and it's wrong. And one of the big things is, it's about these beggars, yeah, take money tax free. And we've already had one of the coppers turn around and say it's not fair that we're working 50 hours a week and we pay our taxes and, we're, and they're picking 500 quid a week up. That's an issue. So because the police work for the Crown, the Crown, the Crown, if we all know who the Crown is, yeah, the Crown basically employ the police, therefore at the end of the day the Crown is associated with HMRC, it's associated with all of it, yeah, it's all about their revenue coming back in from the people that they're giving out, and because these beggars are getting money tax free, which I don't condone, but if that's what they choose to do, then that's up to them, and if people want to give them the money, that's fine, but I've found a lot of issues from the police, they're not happy, and they nearly put the phone in, didn't they? That day yeah. when we were talking, when he turned around and he's like that, and I says, but that's from your perspective that this guy who's getting this money on the streets not paying tax, and you've got an issue with that. That's your own private issue. Yeah, you shouldn't be using it in, in the power or authority that you think you've got to push this on to these people because they're not paying tax and you are. Why don't you leave your job and go begging? And then you ain't got this issue of paying the tax man. But anyway, that's off the track. So what we did was, I arranged a meeting with Leeds Bid. And when I arranged a meeting, I didn't get just a manager. I got the CEO of Leeds, I got the CEO of London, and I got the managing director. I went with Brett from Real Change. And from there, I put up a solution to him. I said, to save you resources and to save you policing time, instead of calling police and relevant agencies to come and move these, obviously give me a yellow card and red card to move these homeless people on, why can't they ring me, let me get into town, let me engage with these homeless people, and because I've got the trust, let me move them on out of the city centre, so they're not getting a yellow card, they're not getting a red card, and the police are not tied up with all the paperwork, going back to the station when there's more, impo more important crimes out there to go deal with. So what Leeds did, did, did then was, Brett can vouch for me that it wasn't the big CEO who wanted to take it on, it was his ambassadors, his ambassadors went, that would work perfect, because obviously they're dealing with homeless people when they're there to give information to people on the street, you know, they're there to introduce people into the city centre. So they've started to trial this now. So they've took my number, they're emailing me regularly. Brett can vouch for me, can't you, Brett? Um, I'm starting to have regular meetings with them. So if there is homeless de destitution on the street, they're going to start ringing me, they're going to get in contact with me, and I'm going to make sure that I've, I'm there within, I said to them, at the moment, 40 minutes. But right now we're trying to build a hub. If we can build a hub on the perimeter, 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 perimeter of the town centre, um, it's not a catch-22 for them. You know, these guys, when they get a red card, when they get a yellow card, and they need someone or they need a cut the shoulder to cry on, they're going to be able to come straight to our hub. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get right on the perimeter line. So obviously, when, when we get kicked out of the town centre, they can come straight to us. We're hopefully going to get somewhere where it's got a couple of bedrooms in there, so obviously it's going to be like a halfway house. You know, we're not going to be charging these guys a ridiculous amount of money. We're not going to be charging them at all. But what we're trying to do is now is get the council on board. The, the council have been for six months not, not, not engaging with me. They've been sending the crib down, they've been sending the leads bid down, they've been sending everybody else to okay. deal with their problems. So what I've done is, yeah, is I've gone straight on Facebook, I've made a video, and it's probably had about two, 3,000 views in a, in, in a couple of days, and from there I emailed the council. As soon as that, they've got a homeless strategy that's in place, but it actually ran out in 2015. So right now we don't have a homeless strategy in place, so what are they running off? They're running off a 2000, uh, 2015 strategy, but in their strategy it says that they've got a legal responsibility from 2003 to make sure that no homeless person needs to stay on the streets more than one night in the leading Leeds City Centre. So I'm starting to address this with them, you know, and what I'm doing is I'm sending it in quotations. So every time I send an email, I'm sending one of their quotations in the email with it. So I'm sending, it's your legal responsibility. As soon as that, I got a response within two minutes saying, right, we'll have a meeting next week. But when I get a meeting, I've had a, I've had a meeting with Brett last week with a crypt, didn't we? 
um, and Leeds Food Aid Network. And then I've got another meeting with a crypt on Tuesday from trying to steal my idea for the ID cards and put them into production. But then when I go on Wednesday with the lease housing options, they want to bring the crypt with them to answer their questions. So what Watch I'm saying, it. so what I'm saying here is that obviously you can see that Leeds City Council have got a say in their policy, and these guys answer every question that these got these guys have had. I even sent them an email back saying, I, I don't understand why the crypt are going to be there with you. I've already got a meeting with the crypt on Tuesday, so why do they need to answer your questions on a, on, on a Wednesday? And all I got back was, superb, see you then. You know, these guys know that I'm about exposing people and I will go out there and expose them. And the least that they say to me is, is better for them in a, in, in a way. But every meeting we go to, they're always asking us if I've got a camera on me. I've <laughs> making sure I'm not being recorded. Because no. these guys know that, you know, at the moment we're damaging their reputation. Me and Brett were sat in a meeting with Leeds Big with three CEOs, managing directors, one from London, one from Leeds. And did they or did not beg Brett beggars to stop doing what we were doing? They were saying that we was damaging their reputation. These guys are multi million pound business and we're damaging their reputation. And why we're damaging it is because we're giving it away for free. They don't like the term free. Mm. And when I first started this in January, they wanted to use me as an umbrella system. Don can vouch for me. They wanted to use me to refer everyone to their kind of services. So when they got let down, they fell through the cracks. They can go, Leaves Homeless Partnerships did that. Leaves Homeless Partnerships did that. They referred you, he referred you. And I said no. So no one wanted to meet me. No one wanted to work with me. And I was called. Don't come out from it. A Nazi organisation within really? the police centre. A Nazi really? organisation. What's I done? <laughs> because I was giving everything away for free. Oh, so obviously we've gone back to the drawing board. So it's the labelling again. Yes. It's yes. The, they've come yes. in with the labelling and then and basically to break it down yes. and, and get you in that situation. Every every meeting here done tabbed, by the way, I was supposed to go, but summer happened to stop me going. I don't think these people are ready for me yet because when I get in there and I sit with them, they, 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 they're just getting boxed off and that, that, that's pretty much it. I'm going to box them off. Everything that they say, I'm going to bring it back to where it needs to be back and it's back to the people. Stop stop reciting shit off pieces of paper to me. I'm that's not interested. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Come and talk to me, the man. And because we're all men exactly. and we're all women. Yeah, and that's it. And this, this is where people are in a situation where all these authorities think they've got some god given right and I'm like, you know, but I don't think they're ready for me yet, but they're go not. ahead and sorry. Um, <laughs> the good thing about what we've done at the moment is, is like, when I first started, the council told me that I had to refer everything through them, so 24 hour emergency, ring them, I can refer everything through them and we'll deal with everything. Every person I give them, they didn't do nothing good, they'll probably give them a one night in St George's Crypt and Earth to that they didn't help them at all. So what we did was we did our own research. So I went every single hostel in Lee City Centre. I went well in the suburbs, didn't we don't. And what I've got now is I've got every single referral pack for every single hostel. I self-refer now. I've got a, a hostel on board called Bracken Car. I don't know whether you've heard of it. It's one of the biggest uh, hostels in Leeds, but they've got self-independent flats. So when you go there for the first couple of nights you'll be in shared accommodation. But obviously that's just obviously so they can assess you, make sure that you're not going to hurt yourself and that. And then from there you've got self-contained flats where you've got your own bedroom, you've got your own living area, you've got your own kitchen, you've got your own shower facilities. You know, and this is how to get them back, in, uh, back into society. But when they get into the hostel, the cluster's not homeless because they've got a roof over heads. But these guys are only in a hostel for six months. So yeah, they get the priority air, but then they don't get the actual support that they do need. So what we're trying to build in, and like obviously the woman at the back was mentioning, but it's not all about feeding these guys. It's not all about going out there and feeding them, it's about the aftercare, it's about the relapse. So what we're trying to build is we're trying to build a structure where we are the start of it. So we do all the paperwork, we do all the self-referrals, we do everything that they need that they need doing. Then when they get onto the detox programme or whatever programme they need to go onto, the second part's not done by us. So it's done by a third party organisation, let's say forward leads for drug rehabilitation. And then when they come after that, or when they come out of that, it's obviously the aftercare and the relapse. That's our support then, what we're going to set up. So it's a three-part stage. We deal with the first part, the organisations deal with the second part, and we pick them up for the third part. And that's what we're trying to get in place, because it's all about the aftercare and the relapsing. We know that these people are in there, they're in there for, what, 13 weeks? Some people are in there for a year. You know, some people have got to do 12 months and give a bit of work back to these organisations to obviously get on better, obviously to get off their detox. But obviously, if we can pick them up as soon as they come out of that environment, and we can give them that constant 12 to 18 months apart. That's what we're trying to do now. We're trying to uh, obviously build a hill for it. A lot of people don't know this at the moment because obviously we kept it to ourselves, but we have got a company on board who's actually given us a little bit of funding, not much, 
place a little bit.